I'm not going to be critical, you know, of Sankey or how they did some of those things because there's a, a lot of moving pieces and a lot of things they had to do pretty quickly. And yeah. no matter what they did, they couldn't appease everybody. Yep. Uh, although they did screw Florida, so I'm, I'm, I'm down with that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to My Got A Podcast. I'm Jim Wood. In this episode, John Powell and I are joined by Bobby Wilson. We talk about his Georgia story, bourbon, steaks, college football, and we answer questions from you, our listeners. As always, remember to check out the newly redesigned MyGotAPodcast.com to see our latest merch. You can follow us on social media at MyGotAPodcast. Finally, if you need help with your website or your online presence, head over to WorkingWebMedia.com slash dogs. Now, let's join the conversation in progress. All right, back for another episode of My Got a Podcast. Um, you know, some people asked us how can we follow up an episode with Frip Dog, and the only way we knew how to do that was with Bobby Wilson. Bobby, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, Frip Dog is my hero and my great <laughs> friend. So there's there's no way I can I can even compete with that. But I, but the fact that I get to follow your dad, yes, I'm loving that a lot. <laughs> uh, awesome. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Longtime friend of the show. Um, I know we got to meet you in person in that, you know, we, we talk about that, the, the Clemson game in Charlotte so much. And um, I think that meant a lot. It meant a lot to the podcast, honestly. Um, and we got to meet so many people um, that day, uh, you included, and have been, uh, you know, Shoot, seeing you at tailgates ever since. So uh, this one's been a long time coming as well. We're happy, we're happy to have you on. <laughs> oh, cool. Awesome, guys. I can't wait to talk about whatever in the world it is we're going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome um, to the show. <laughs> well, yeah, seriously. Yeah, that's it. Now, now you know how uh, behind the scenes what, what goes on. I do. Uh, so on that note of that first time we met in Charlotte, and this is what my dad did when he was here. Uh, so I've got the Weller Special Reserve, the green label. I had never had that until that day. And so, Bobby, the way I remember it, so John John Tweets uh, brought that with him uh, to the tailgate uh, along with some co- a bag of combos, I believe. Um, but I do remember I, I toasted you. Uh, and we had a cheers the first time I ever had this. So I uh, figured I'd run, run it back, as they say. <laughs> oh, that's that's aw- You know what that was? John did bring that, and... And I tell you what, tonight I brought, I brought a little foolproof uh, oh, just in case yeah. we need a little something extra to go for. <laughs> cheers, guys, and cheers to John Tweet Sports and everybody we met that day. And uh, I, I have become really, really close to many of the people that we met that day. It's kind of crazy, really. It, it is, is kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh, speak, speaking of, of that topic, so how did you how, what, how did you get plugged into the to that crew? I think it was through uh, Greg. Um, you know, he's from Charlotte, and I, I, you know, we were everybody, not everybody, but a few of us were on Twitter, and we knew we were having the tailgate. And I had, I can't remember if I had met Greg before, but I knew we had had swapped some information and and uh, on Twitter or whatever. And so I was like, well, hell, we we get to meet, you know, a few of our dogs. And then when I show up there. There were so many of us there, <laughs> and we. And actually, it's hard for me to believe that was the first time I met uh, Lou Fripp Dog. Yeah, and he and I had there's so many synergies and so many things that we have in common from a everything from a business perspective and approach to our beloved dogs uh, and everybody there and was just great friends. You know, uh, Jake McAllis, you know, his dad was a big time daughter and dog. I got to meet him there for the first time and he and I and our family and his family are pretty close now. And he came out, you know, to the California uh, national championship for our dinner and all this stuff. I can talk about just that alone for about an hour. So <laughs> it was pretty that cool. was an epic looking dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't suck. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> I brought three magnums of Camus that night and we wound up buying a lot more wine afterwards. So you can imagine how that, that evening went. <laughs> it went, it went elite. Yeah, it, it was great friends there too. 
Yeah, yeah. No, I uh I I got out there later, I think, than the than the dinner. Uh, but got to, you know, we got to hang at the tailgate out there in LA. Yes. And uh <laughs> and then we th- you know, Bobby was the one that I ran into post game when my sister and I were like wandering around in the rain. Um, and I was like, let's just go back to where the tailgate was. And my sister's like, no one's going to be there. And that's when I walked up on, uh, Bobby and Marler having a good conversation <laughs> on the side of the street. That's back when me and Marler were best pals. Those were, those were the good old days. That's right. That's right. Oh. <laughs> I oh. actually reached out to him a few days ago with, with an olive branch, but I haven't heard back from him yet. We, we got to okay. bury the hatchet to be pals again. Okay. Was, it, was it was it during his his uh, exile? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, maybe you sent it to his account that got deleted. I don't know. Well, I'm just throwing it out there. It happens like you know once a year. <laughs> I think I did. I know, right? I can't believe that guy. <laughs> uh, good times. Good times. Too good. Well, so JP, that really was the that really was yeah. the first time that you met that you met everybody, huh? Yeah, at the that's right. The tailgate before the the Clemson game in Charlotte, and actually, I'm going to give all of us credit for that dog tailgate that we actually kickstarted the tremendous run that we are still on. Yeah, I mean, it, it, <laughs> looking back on it, you know, just to win that game was like fantastic and all that. And I don't know that we've lost uh, a regular season game since then. It's kind, it's kind of crazy, right? It 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 actually it is it is crazy. And that game was like, you know, all the build up, all the anticipation, and it was so close. It was tight. It was a hard fought win. You know, I mean, you before the offense exploded, <laughs> uh, you know, right. pre Stetson, right? Like it was, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, I, I mean, I do. I look. We we look back to that that so often of just the beginning of. Of, of where we're at, you know, where we are. And I think you can, you can say that like on the field with the team and then off the field with so many relationships that started that day. It, and, you know, just one other little trivia bit, I think, wasn't JT Daniels starting then? Oh yeah. Uh, and <laughs> I a actually couple saw when I lived in season. Newport beach in Southern California, me and a friend of mine uh, went to a play, his son played in a playoff game with the high, it was in the high school at Huntington beach. They were playing modern day and guess who the quarterback was? It was <laughs> JP Daniels. So, so yeah, wow. so I saw him play in high school. What a what a small world, right? That is crazy. Now, I'm trying to remember. Had you moved back to Georgia at that Clemson, or were you still out in California at that point? I was still out in California. In California. I mean, okay, I, yeah. I had some major air miles going there, and you know, my my <laughs> wife now, my my girlfriend at the time, we were, you know, we were both flying back and forth a pretty good bit. So. It was okay. pretty cool, though. Yeah, yeah. Good times. JP, I know you've got your question that you always like to ask folks. I do, I do. Um, Bobby, as you know, when we have a guest on, we always like to ask the question, what is your Georgia story? So I know that you are from south, southwest, southwest Georgia, right? Yeah, I grew up in a little bitty town called Leesburg, Georgia, where – Buster Posey and Luke Bryan are. And another piece of trivia, Luke Bryan sang at my sister's wedding before he hit it big. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> nice. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So what's your what's your what's your Georgia origin story? Well, let's see. I guess it goes back. My dad took my my first Georgia game, my dad took my brother and I to uh to see Georgia Tech. And the only thing I remember about that game was it was 32 degrees. <laughs> it was raining. And that's the cold to this day. That's the coldest I've ever been in my entire life. <laughs> but uh, yeah, one of my dad's friends was a uh, Georgia grad and had season tickets. So he gave us tickets and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, but growing up in Georgia, you're always going to be, be a bulldog, right? I actually went to Georgia for about for the my, a first quarter and thought the school was too big, and uh, wound up going to Georgia Southwestern. So I actually I'm not an I'm not a Georgia grad, although I went for about a minute and um, joined <laughs> like a, <laughs> joined a fraternity there and and loved it. But still, you know, it wasn't a long drive to go to the games. I went to a ton of games and saw uh, you know Herschel Walker play a lot, those type of things. And yeah. 
and had a good time at a couple of sugar bowls. You, uh, those, those were the, your dad can, can remember that. I'm sure. Jim. Those <laughs> yeah. were the day. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. He's, so that, he's and, wheeling, and he's my, wheeling wheelbarrows out. <laughs> yeah. My, my wife's a Georgia grad and a bunch of her friends are, and, and, you know, I'm in the McGill society or whatever. So, so I love it. Yeah. So, That's but awesome. it, it was there, it was there early on, uh, in, in, instilled from family, which I know we can, we can, we can relate to here. Uh, I think that's how a lot of us get, get started. Uh, they always say, they always say, start them young, raise them right. <laughs> <laughs> raise them right. That's exactly. Uh, what, um, I guess Bobby, just like, I know we, we talked about like where the kind of the, the run that we're on started in, you know, in 2021 back in that Clemson game. I mean, how, how was that for you? I mean, like, you know, talking about that you had seen, you know, you'd watch Herschel play, you saw the 80 championship, and then you know, we've had the, we had the drought for, for so long. Not that we didn't have good football in between, but not national championship level football. I mean, what, what was it like for you just kind of like with that turnaround and, and getting back to that ultimate level of success? I did, yeah, that's, that's a great question. I mean, cause you know, uh, being, a a fan and, and everything else. I, I even feel like more than a fan. I feel like a part of the university like you guys do and all that, right? Because we spent right. so much of our, our time invested in it or whatever. But we were always close. We were so close. And then, you know, that SEC shorts or whatever that's got the girl <laughs> hope in it. Yeah. God, that that was the epitome of the Georgia fan. Every year is like, this could be our year. And, and even, another side note, even like to the, today, Buck Blue is still one of my all-time world heroes. I mean, I saw the mm -hmm. guy play football. I saw him play baseball, all that kind of stuff, and follow him on Twitter and all that kind of stuff. So he was like a legend to lead, you know, for that year that we won the national championship. So, so, but it was so many years, and we were always so close. And Mark Rick, I love him. What a fantastic man! He took the he took our our program and the university to the next level, but then whenever Kirby came in, you know we won at Notre Dame, and I'm like, wow, you know, all of a sudden we won a game that typically we lose, and I go back and to me that's a foundational game, and even though that Clemson game at the time, you know, Clemson is not the Clemson they are now. Uh, Dabo and Clemson are another program that Kirby killed. <laughs> is what I'm going to say. He crushed their souls. So Clemson has not been the same since that game. And I apologize to the Clemson fans that uh, I follow on Twitter and follow me and might listen to the podcast. But so, so quote, we started getting over the hump and we realized, you know, we, we really are good. We can win these things. And so, yeah, we, we started doing that. And then whenever, you know, we went to Indianapolis and, and won there, that was like, the 800 pound gorilla that was on our back that we, we mm. didn't just toss him off. We picked his ass up and threw him down hard <laughs> and we have not looked back since. So, so yeah, I do. I still go back to the Charlotte game and looking back on it, you know, how close that was and all that from there on, we really didn't have that, that close of a game. It was pretty good after that. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it, it's been a good run. <laughs> it's true. I've been, I've been thinking about that. Like, um, to put it mildly, a good role. Well, yeah, and I can think about it, like on this podcast, like John, for you and I, like when, on our first season was the COVID year, and we were like having to like break down and analyze like how to win every game. <laughs> like that's changed a little, <laughs> that changed a little bit last year. Uh, it's like don't turn the ball over, we win the game. <laughs> our our <laughs> analysis, our analysis became Georgia good, other team bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Heck of a run. No, I like I, I I love it. I just like I know what um you know like what it's felt like for John and I. Um but you know that was the first, you know, natural championship for us. So I'm always I always like to hear that perspective of um the the, the drought, right? And 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 how people have felt with that. So yeah. Yeah, what, yeah, what, but we, what did it feel we, like? We never to gave you? up. Yeah. Well, I didn't mean to interrupt you there, John, but I will say, you know, the all of us loyal fans, we never gave up. And we every year we had hope. Every I mean, legitimately, every year we thought this is a year. And then <laughs> yeah. once we turn once we turned the corner, it really was the year. Yeah, yeah, it was unbelievable. The so so Bobby, you, you 
you've been through several coaching coaching regimes in your fandom and as a as an insider i would refer to you as an insider especially someone that's been so uh with the connected with the university through the mcgill society like what's been the vibe over the years through each through each coaching regime uh, let's see. I got, and what is I, it I don't mean to be, I, so I guess different. I want to be a little careful because I, <laughs> I do have a little bit of an in, insight on on some of that. I mean, part of my family on, on uh, that my family married into are, are big time, long time Georgia donors and things like that. I mean, they're and and they're great people on, on top of that. But uh, yeah, so maybe I know some things that more than others. But I don't try to make a big deal of that. But but as, so as far as the the coaching things go, I mean so what, what I mean what specifically like you're talking about uh, just like the Mark Briggs. Like what, what what's the what are program differentiators or you know program uh, fence posts that kind of thing you know what I mean like what 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 is it about Kirby's Kirby's program that's been different than the others? He, I tell you, Kirby is uh, I mean obviously I've never seen anybody work like that man works. He never takes an off day. Uh, obviously, being a, an alumna and he's a player, his wife played there. He loves the university. He hates Florida like we hate Florida. <laughs> all, all those type of things, right? And, and Kirby is the kind of guy like he's confident, but he's not cocky like some of the coaches were out there. Like mm-hmm. Steve Spurrier, I don't want to digress on him, but I still got some bad thoughts about that guy. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, so so Kirby came in, worked hard. He locked up the state of Georgia, and I remember one of the first things Kirby said was, "You know, our offensive and defensive lines are too small. We mm-hmm. have to win the line of scrimmage. And if you look at our line of scrimmage since we since Kirby was there versus any previous coach." That's actually the biggest differentiator between our teams now than it was. We've always had some really good skilled skilled players, right? I mean, big time players in NFL, big time college players, but now the line of scrimmage, uh, we own that for the most part. And he brings in the big guys, the athletic guys, kids that want to play, want to be a part of the team, and then he gets that emotional buy-in. To where the players, you know, instead of worried about stats or how many snaps I'm going to get, they worry about winning and how he does that. He's got some magic dust or whatever, <laughs> but that that is the difference with Kirby. Everybody is there to work hard every day, push each other, and win. Man, yeah, I love it. Amen I love to it. That. <laughs> And I, I know like, you know, people always say like, if Kirby wasn't in coaching, he would be successful, like in the business world. And I would agree, like from what I've seen with him, just, you know, when, if you ever get the chance to be in a room with him, just to see him work the room and work a crowd, uh, is pretty impressive. Oh, it, well, it really like is. I, I've been fortunate enough to do that. <laughs> and you know, in my business life, you know, I was a VP at FedEx for a, a lot of years and I was in meetings with Fred Smith and all that. And I'm not name dropping. But the Kirby's presence is more so than Fred Smith. Uh, let me just throw that out there. Yeah, yeah, no, that's impressive. I can believe yeah. it. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, you know, I mean, I I love that you brought up the, that he he hates Florida like we do because I I, <laughs> right. I I feel like the. I mean, like he's one of us, you he's know, one of like us. yeah, and, and he was there and he experienced firsthand those you know, so close, so close years, even back when he coached at, at Georgia, right? So his, his one year as the running backs coach in 2005, I mean, think of how close that team was, right? What two losses, um, until the, the, what the, the splendable as Tony Waller calls it, the, the sugar bowl Atlanta, but like that team was so close with, with DJ Shockley, at quarterback. Um, and you just lose like the wrong game. And oh, by the way, Florida was one of those that year too. So I, know, I, I feel like that had, that's that puts so much like motivation with him, uh, and we have seen it come out with the FTMF that we all know. Uh, I mean, like not every coach is doing that. <laughs> I know and he's and I, uh, you know, the, when after Kirby was was mic'd up and was heard saying the F word and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I think his mom tried to call him calm him down, but now Kirby is going to be Kirby. 
Yeah. And I think the, the players appreciate that. I mean, Kirby's just a real guy. He's going to work your, your behind off, but he's also going to love you. And he's going to give you some tough love. Yeah. So I like it. And I, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to play every year in that, uh, the, the golf outing that we have, you know, the Bulldogs battling breast cancer where we play with the players. Yeah. And, and so I played with, with, you know, with Arian Smith two years ago and, and, uh, play with a, with a, gosh, I can't believe I'm, I'm drawing a blank on his name. Mark. Yeah. Marcus Rosemary St. Jack. I can't believe I, I forgot Marcus, oh, but I got a, chance awesome. to play with, got a chance to play with him. And those, and whenever you get to just kind of talk to them in a golf cart, they're just real average guys, just like we are, right? They're yeah. not all full of themselves. And so, so we've got good kids on our team as well. Yeah. Marcus Rosby is going to be on an NFL squad here soon. <laughs> Dude, he, I tell you, I've, I've been fortunate enough to see um, several of the practices. I saw him make a, make a catch in practice about midseason. The dude's hands are, are about this big. And <laughs> I, uh, yeah. And uh, back through the ball about 300 miles an hour for about a 25 yard pass. He goes up about 10 feet and catches it on the sideline. I've never seen a catch like that. So, so yeah, I think he is, a, is an absolute NFL player, and he will catch whatever's thrown anywhere close to him. Yeah, I uh, agree with that. Right, John? Is that how you is that how you have him summed up too? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he's Mister Reliable. <laughs> yeah, I I do I man, he's one of those guys. I mean, with as great of a career as he had, like imagine if he didn't have that devastating ankle injury when he was a freshman. Yeah, oh, um, I know, right? It is hard to believe that. Uh, yeah, I forgot that that was Marcus that had that injury. He was going to be so good, young. I mean, he's he's a hard worker. He was a leader in all the practices. He's yeah. exactly what an NFL team wants on their squad in so many ways. Besides what's on the field, I agree. I mean, you look at like Kiaris Jackson, right? I mean, like similar in like work ethic, um, team guy, you know. Like, you know, he, he was the one that said, like, I'm not here to put up stats. I'm here to put up banners, you know, like stuff like that. And I feel like Marcus is, is similar and, you know, I mean, Kiaris made the Titans. Um, so I, I definitely expect him to catch on with the team. Um, man, I mean, Me we're going to have another, uh, bulldog showcase coming up in the NFL draft. I know like, you know, uh, pro day, we just had pro day, uh, ton of guys at the combine. Um, I don't know. My, my Falcons probably won't draft any Georgia players, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, never you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, with, with Kirk, I didn't realize he had, I didn't know his wife was a Georgia grad. His kids show up in the Georgia gear. Oh, yeah. you, know, you, know, you said me on Twitter. I mean, I'll dog the Falcons because I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not a big author blank fan. I mean, I, I mean, they make tons of money, but he doesn't put a winner on the field. I've kind of changed my tune a little bit here. So maybe they will get a few Falcons. So fun, fun fact. I mean, uh, Bulldogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun fact. Uh, so you mentioned Kirk Cousins and that his his wife's family is is Georgia. Uh, his, her older brother, oldest brother, is in my fantasy football league. Like I went to high school with with that family, and oh, their cool. their mom was the home ec teacher uh, at my high school. So I, I know that family well. Small hey. Is it isn't the bulldog world kind of small, right? Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> it's nuts. It's nuts. Well, so what's, so what's the vibe for what's the vibe for for the season coming up here, Bobby? Have you been to any of the practices thus far? Uh, well, I mean, you know, I haven't been to any of the spring practices yet. Believe it or not, this is actually going to be. Um, our team this year has the most experience of any team that Kirby's had. Mm. So, it, so everybody talks about reloading and all that. I mean, we are sitting on a powder keg of talent. Uh, so there will be zero drop off. I cannot wait until our dogs show up in Tuscaloosa and in Austin, Texas, and lay the hammer down. <laughs> yes. yes man i love that yes <laughs> season, my son lives in preview. austin so i get a free place to stay so we'll have a big time that that weekend oh, which is not go. not easy to come by with like the uh what is like the f1 race is in town that same weekend or something yeah so all like, the hotels and everything's yeah. all booked up it was kind of crazy but uh 
But yeah, and I'm actually glad. Typically, I don't like to play a lot of big games early, like in September. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and of course, we'd rather play, uh, you know, Bama or Texas and, and Sanford, right? And Athens. Yeah. But, you know, we... You know, we haven't lost a road game since 1920. I'm just going to keep throwing that out there. We haven't done that. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah. I'm and uh, without speaking too bad about about Bama, I don't I don't even think that game is going to be close. We're going to unleash uh, the dogs when we when we get over to Tuscaloosa. Man, that would be fantastic. That would be, yeah, from your lips to, from your lips to, Kirby's, to Kirby's lips with a little uh, bit more profanity. Oh, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I do think, Bobby, what do you think about the whole, like, with this, like, the one-off schedule that they did this year? Um, I, I've said that, like, I, I hope they come up with, a like, an actual schedule map like they used to have, you know, where, like, you would just go through the progression. Um, cause yes. I, my opinion is I feel like they didn't do a very good job of getting a, a balanced schedule this year. I don't know. How do you, how do you feel about that? No, I, I think that's spot on Jim and they, uh, I'm not going to be critical, you know, of Seiki or how they did some of those things, because there's a, a lot of moving pieces and a lot of things they had to do pretty quickly. And yeah. no matter what they did, they couldn't appease everybody. Yep. Uh, although they did screw Florida, so I'm I'm, I'm down with that. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry about the sidebar there, but yeah. So uh, you know, uh, I hope we can get back into you know we're not playing uh, South Carolina this year, mm-hmm. which uh, mm-hmm. that was never a quote rivalry, but it really was. I mean, we always we had trouble beating those guys a lot of times. You know, even this past year, first half they looked uh, pretty damn good. Yeah. Uh, so and so we can keep some of those rivalries in those games. I think they're trying to figure that out. But you know, with the expanded playoffs, you know, the regular season games are are they not going to be as big as they were before? And so, how do you prepare for them? But we've there's a there's more questions than we have answers right now. And I'm pretty sure you guys feel the same way about that. Yeah, I would much rather I would much rather be playing South Carolina than. Uh, than Texas, <laughs> um, just because, yeah. just because, like, like you said, for for me personally, that's always been that game historically was always on my birthday weekend. Uh, when I was in college, it was a toss up every. It felt like every other year it was going to be a bad birthday. <laughs> <laughs> matter of fact, matter of fact, my daughter was born on one of those one of those bad days. <laughs> oh wow. Uh. Yeah, man, we struggled with that when when we were in school. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, that's my my, my get off the lawn moment will be that I, I don't in general I don't like it. I don't like all the changes. I, I think you bring up a good point though, right? With the playoff expanding, like, does it lessen the value of those regular season games? And I think the the counter argument is like there will be quote more meaningful games in that teams that lose will still have meaningful games, and I'm not going to dispute that. But what you lose is that whole like the soul crushing loss game, you know, where like you lose one game and it's like, up, oh, it's over. I mean, that goes away. I mean, if you think of, even this past year, right. We had a soul crushing loss in the SEC championship game next year. That game means nothing. We're still, we're still in the playoff. Right. That's, I mean, unless you're Alabama, you can lose a couple of games. And still make it <laughs> True. But, Fair. but I don't, I don't want to digress. I mean, and, and you know, we go from rank number one, drop to number six. We could, yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's not good. So uh, so at least yeah. now we don't have to worry about those type of things. Yeah, you definitely don't. Agreed. The committee will have a harder time messing things up. I I actually think that that is a good segue into our first listener question, and and we can we can bounce around if we if we want to come out of those. But um, fifty one to seven GATA said now that they have apparently increased the playoff from twelve teams to fourteen teams without even trying the twelve team playoff. <laughs> what are the chances they increase it to 16 without even trying the 14 team playoff? Uh, you know, first I was, yeah, I'm, I'm, I was thinking eight teams were plenty enough to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, and if you go from 12, the more teams you have, the more it waters it down and then the more games you have to play. I don't think they're going to expand it to, uh, to 16. I've heard a lot of people say they will that type of thing. Um, I, I don't think we're going to, I don't think we're going to see that actually. 
I mean, if if this year goes good, then uh, maybe what we stick with. That's I, that's my thoughts on it right now. Anyway, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. I think six would have been enough personally, but I, I don't think he did more than six. But that's me, JP. Right. What are you thinking? Bring yeah. back the bring back the BCS. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Sixteen. Yeah, that was. Uh, I'm I'm in I'm in Jim's boat. I'm in Jim's boat. Let's 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 contract. <laughs> <laughs> Look, what's great about college football? Arguing, right? <laughs> and it's like when you had all the bowl games and everyone just argued. It was kind of awesome. I don't know. I'm now it's going to be even worse though, because like at some point it is it's going to be everybody was trying to recreate that uh, that March Madness kind of vibe with all these expanded playoffs and things like that. Like then you get a situation where a team gets hot at the right moment. Mm-hmm. That frankly n- doesn't have any business being in the conversation. Like you, you could end up with a situation where you got like a three loss national champion or a four loss national champion. I don't know. I don't know how the math would shake out there, but like these, these opportunities for teams that are less than from a historical perspective, b- being able to be in those conversations is is a little a little frustrating. Let's say Georgia does have an off year one year, and Bama has an off year, and all, all these other teams, the, the couple of these other teams, just come out of nowhere and and run the table at the end, and all of a sudden they're the national champion, and they weren't even in the conversation. That that that, that just doesn't sit well with me for college football. Yes, yeah. I, I would agree with that, John. However, you know it's you know I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, because you got. Uh, the, the good teams are getting better. You're going to have injuries. You know, it's, it's a different sport than basketball, obviously, for, for a lot of reasons, uh, clearly, and all that kind of stuff. I don't think you're going to see somebody with three or four losses coming all hot and then really making a go at it. I could be wrong, but I don't think they're going to see that. I think it's going to wind up still being the same Power 5 teams playing for the championship, personally. I'd actually prefer that. I don't know. I, I, cause like, you know, when I think the, the kind of the argument for it is like that, the giants team, you know, that beat Tom Brady and it's like, Oh, you know, that wasn't a great, even a great giants team. I wouldn't say, um, and succeed. That's why the NFL playoffs is so great. And it's like, is it, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not an, I, I don't, I'm not an NFL fan. So yeah. I can't really, I can't really speak to it. We have to ask. We we'll have to defer to, to Lamar on, on <laughs> some of that. Yeah, uh, he's a big he's a big Steelers fan. Um, but I, I just college football was a unique sport, and it is increasingly less so now. And yeah. making it like the other sports that, in my opinion, are fraught with issues, it seems like bad business. And it may not be, and it may be bad business from a fan experience, from a historical storied, you know, traditions experience. But obviously, the, we all we're all <laughs> smart enough to realize that it's if there's more a more opportunity to maximize the dollar, they're going to do it. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's see. I, actually, okay. Before we get to the next one, I thought it was funny that we mentioned basketball a couple of times in that conversation. And I was going to make a joke and I probably missed my moment to say that this was the NIT preview episode. Uh, <laughs> cause <laughs> if you didn't know Georgia did get into the NIT. Uh, we're in the postseason. Yes. Post, postseason improvement, improvement better than last season. Uh, first time in the postseason for a while. So I will be watching. It's 17, but, uh, man. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I went last time or last time we were in the NCAA tournament, I went last two times the dogs have made the NCAA tournament. They played their first round game in Charlotte and I went, um, we lost both of those unfortunately, but, um, yeah, but not, not quite there yet, but I was happy to see them get in. I think it only took like, what, like four teams turning down the bid (laughs) or something like that. (laughs) Uh, but we're in post, uh, Xavier, um, which is the team that foiled that, you know, that 2008 SEC tournament tornado team. Uh, they lost to Xavier in the opening round of the NCAA tournament. So we're going to get, try to get payback for that. So that's, that's what I'm going to say there. That was for Fletcher. Okay. 
We can move on. <laughs> the basketball uh, minute. The basketball <laughs> minute for Fletcher. All right. Uh, next up, we've got one from Hug Dog. So Jason Huggins. Uh, first, he just said, this makes me happy, Bobby, that you were going to be on. So I thought that was awesome. I love uh, Jason Huggins and his entire family. I will absolutely. say that live and in color. Amen. Amen. Uh, so his first question, what is the best way to get that extra heavy pour from your bartender? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think Jason probably gets a lot of the, the extra pours too, but I, I would say it's a couple of things. A lot of people say, well, you're a big tipper and all that kind of thing. And I, and I do tip a hundred percent off of service. Uh, I don't care what the tab is. I tip off of service. But the other thing is, you know, appreciating people. Like when I, when I walk into the place, to any, any of our clubs out here at, at Reynolds, uh, I know the wait staff. I know all of them give a lot of them a hug, you know, or they come up and give me a hug or shake my hand or whatever. So if they know that you're like uh, for real and you're just, you know, uh, understand they're working, but you still treat everybody the like you're supposed to yeah. and you're going to give them a good tip, then I, they do that. I'm, I've never had to ask for a good pour, <laughs> but they always they always give me one. So, so yeah, I say it's twofold. <laughs> Tipping is, is important, but treating people right and letting them know you appreciate them probably means as much as the money. Man, I love that. I love that. Fantastic. Um, let's see. Number two, if you could choose one, bourbon or another football nat- natty. So I'm reading this as, would you give up bourbon? <laughs> For another clarifying night. question. <laughs> I really hated that Jason asked me that question. <laughs> hey, hey, you can, you can always I switch. Mean, you can always switch to scotch. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If it's, you know, I would. I, for for a natty, I would. I would give up my bourbon. I would. It's. I would go with the natty. I think I would too. I went so long without even understanding bourbon. I think I, I think I could pull that off. I, I, this, I can, I can get back to my craft beer selection. This yeah, would, this would you, become you know, a to, Scotch to podcast. Frip, <laughs> yeah, back to Frip Dog. I think you know, in, in Clemson, that was like his first go at bourbon. He and I've had several conversations about everything from business and I mean knee deep in business, and then bourbon. What's the good? What's the bad? Was and now look, look at, look at uh, Frip Dog's bar. Yeah. Like, holy <laughs> <laughs> I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to say that we had a we had a hand in that. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Uh, Jim Jim got into bourbon off the after conversations here. I got into bourbon off uh, off of the conversations here. So, yeah. Yeah. Now John John's been to the bar. Uh been to the Nicholson bar at least in, in the in the basement setup. John John's I've had a, John I've had a pour. That. I've had a pour at Ponda's famous bar. That's right. <laughs> Uh, all right. I like this one. I'm curious on um, this one, Bobby. What's the best professional advice you've ever received? Wow. Um, I'll tell you what. I would uh, I've thought I thought about that when I and I read the question on that. And I've had a lot of great advice and I've had a lot of great uh, development opportunities at uh at FedEx. I mean, actually I've got a executive MBA at Cat School of Business at Pitt because you know, our offices were in Pittsburgh. Hmm. But I would have I would have to say, and it was my it was my Irish boss, he was a chief operating officer for us. He taught me to put things in my rear view mirror very quickly. Hmm. Whether whether you had th- whether you had a, a big problem that day, you own it and understand what happened and you move forward. Or if you had a fantastic day, guess what? That's great. You celebrate and then you get right back on the on the path and move forward. So that's what I would say. Whether it's good or bad, put it in your rearview mirror and keep driving forward for continuous improvement. Man, yeah, that's good. That's good. Sounds it sounds like a, a, a Ted Lasso, the, the business version of Ted Lasso be a goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> Yeah, I didn't even know who Ted Lasso was until I heard all the stuff about him. That I that I actually watched part of that series. I'm like, wow, this is actually pretty good. And yeah, wow. it's that's a, good a fantastic. Show. It's a fantastic, it's a fantastic show. show. It is. Um, let's see. I don't know. I don't know, JP. If you you have anything, I was actually I was trying to think through that too. For for me, anything. I mine was actually was was pretty similar to to yours, Bobby. Because I, I had a, I had a similar thing about that with with putting stuff behind you. 
Um, I guess my other my other one would just be uh, around the communication being key and learning the communication style of others uh, to make sure that they receive the message. Because I I I I know I've had come across that in my career where my message was delivered, but it wasn't received and you have to like make sure that it is received. So that was something Mm -hmm. I learned along the way too. Right. People can tell very quickly if you really care about them and if you're sincere. Yeah. And, and, and I'm, I'm a relationship manager. I mean, I can, I can make decisions that are heartbeat and all that, but I like to know somebody and know about them and their families and all that. And, and, and it means a lot to people. It means a lot to me. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would say that that's that's probably the biggest thing is, um, in in my line of work, like everybody talks numbers and performance, right? Like it's all performance based. What are you doing for me lately? But I've had success in my career with just establishing those relationships, like what Bobby was saying. Like there's 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 people behind the. There's people behind the phone at this, you know, in today's world is behind that camera. Yeah. Um, and the more that you can get connected to them as people, um, the better success that you're going to have across the board, whether it's sales, whether it's leadership, whether it's um, performance based type stuff like in in marketing, like the I, most of my calls aren't have, have nothing to do. Like I talk, there's a client that I have on a monthly basis. We we talk about tacos a lot of the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> we still get our <laughs> done, but we 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 don't really talk a whole lot about like work. <laughs> right, right. Love it. Um, all right, we, 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 we I've got there's a theme that emerges in these next two, Bobby. Um, so first from Trisha from Trisha Ann, uh, game day traditions. Favorite must-have tailgate food? Do you have a Do you have a must-have oh, tailgate food? This is a good one for you, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> the king of the food picks. Actually, actually, uh, when it comes to game day, any type of fried chicken, and I'm in. I gotta have me a piece of fried chicken. What's your What's your go-to fried chicken? Mm. You, you know, I don't know that I have like a favorite. Of- Oh, <laughs> that's and is in the background. She's a gas station fried chicken. <laughs> is that is that friend of the show, Anna? Anna? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Anna. Friend, she's definitely a friend of the show. I, actually, she's one of my favorite foods is as well come on camera. <laughs> it, is, is Golden Pantry uh, fried chicken livers? That, <laughs> Heck I'll yeah! Get bo- I'll get a box of those, and I'll get a two hundred dollar bottle of wine and get on my boat on the lake. <laughs> that's <laughs> and awesome. I'm in heaven. <laughs> uh, that's incredible. that's awesome. That's hey, you can you can take the boy out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the boy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, I had some gas station tacos at uh, at Frip Dog's house, so I, that's I, right. I, I'm, I'm a fan of the gas station food too, Bobby. Oh, oh sweet! And Frip Dog knows about that too. Uh, yeah, he was he was actually he's like, man, I gotta go try those tacos. John said they were so good. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, if I can find a place that when you walk in the door and there's and you're the only gringo in the place, you've walked into the right place. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. So Trisha Ann also said you're, you're fresh out of bourbon and white claw. What's next? <laughs> I don't know if it's good or bad that everybody knows my favorite drinks there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I would say, you know, um, uh, I like gray goose vodka, especially in the summertime. Mm. So, uh, gray goose on ice with fresh squeezed lemon in it. Even like when I'm at the beach and, and drank like, you know, a couple of cases of White Claw in two days. Uh, those, those, get, or I like. I drink a lot of Miller Lite uh, at the beach, but uh, but yeah, v- vodka and uh, fresh squeezed lemon on ice. It's kind of hard to beat that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, nice. so that would be my next go-to. This would be the point to remind folks at home that if you're buying Tito's, you're supporting Texas football. <laughs> You, there you go. See, I don't, I don't drink Tito's because I'm aware of that. And now Hunkers is pretty hard to find, but so, really? so the Hunker Down, it, where I, yeah, it is. Hunker Down is pretty hard to find where I'm at uh, for some reason. Interesting. But, uh, so that I got to find that a, is, I gotta that find is a surprising. We know some folks. 
right. I do know some folks. Yeah. Also, to um, was it ABC? <laughs> ABC package where, where we went, John, the one on like Atlanta highway. Wow. This was in the season. So it had just come out. So they had it there. I'll tell you that. Yeah. The um, ABC, the ABC, ABC shop that, uh, that this is where my dad, your dad, goes. Your dad goes to. Yeah, they had it, but I'm talking in the fall. So I don't know, maybe, maybe uh, supply has changed yeah, you, since the fall. You know, you know, speaking of ABC, the first, no, that was the second time. Cause I met him at, uh, I'm sorry. I'm talking to Anna over here, but the, uh, <laughs> Well, I think actually <laughs> maybe before the maybe even before the uh, the Clemson game, I met uh, Frip Dog in the parking lot of ABC uh, <laughs> Liquor. Yeah, we we both were kind of hooking up and talking, and he's like he's in town. I'm there, so we got to t- that. For some reason, it happened to be our meeting point. This sounds like, this sounds, this sounds like the most elite drug deal of all time. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been for sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um. Following up on the White Claws, Brooks wanted to know what's your go-to flavor of White Claw. This is. Uh, a- <laughs> I don't. Why Brooks drinks Coors Light? Really? Are you kidding me? That guy's going to get on to me about my White Claw. Well, I, I do like. I like mango, pineapple, and my favorite is black cherry. Okay. okay. And I do like. I like high noon as well. I mean, I played high noon pineapple is is a solid choice. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right, I am trying to look something up that I saw yesterday because I'm curious if you guys are aware of this. So there's a new seltzer that has come out, and it's called Happy Dad. Have you seen this? Oh yeah. And there's yeah. a grape. There's a grape flavor. Not. It's grape, and it's and it says Death Row Records on it. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes. And there's like, so I took a picture of it when I was at the grocery store yesterday. And I sent it to Kim. I was like, should I buy this? And, you should, you she, and so she Googled it. it and there's like a commercial with Snoop Dogg saying like, buy, <laughs> buy the grape death row records seltzer. She's like, well, Snoop Dogg said to buy it. So you have to. So I did. I haven't had it yet, but I have some. So sounds I'll, I'll report back Bobby. Snoop. Yeah. Yeah. I got to do what he says. That sounds like the suburban version of purple drink. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's not drink. It's drink. D-R-A. Yeah. That's, <laughs> purple drink. I tried, I tried to, I tried to throw it out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, this one was just a shout out from the dog father, you know, the dog father, also a friend of the show, former guest said that this was sounding like the goat episode. So high praise Bobby uh, from JT, the dog father. Yeah. I um, appreciate it. Thanks JT. <laughs> All right. Bubby Dean. Bubby says the dogs have gone eight and zero in regular season SEC games over the last three seasons with road games at Alabama, Texas, and Ole Miss. Will the dogs run that gauntlet and stay undefeated in 2024? That's a great question, and those are three of the – I would say we have the toughest road games uh, out there, period. Yeah. And if you look back – if you when, the, when, the, when we do this, when we beat Alabama and we beat Texas, I, I actually think that Ole Miss is going to be the toughest game that we have. Mm. Uh, I have them winning the West, personally. I mean, uh, they, they've always improved, and they've got great athletes. Uh, but yes, uh, I think we can do that because our dogs can play uh, in any stadium and you see how good we travel. We've always traveled good, but now we travel exceptionally well, like even to an elite basis like that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I believe that we can win all three of those games and I'm going to throw it out there that the Ole Miss game will win that our on a, like a last minute field goal to, to pull that out. Mm. I like it. I like the it. Fighting hunters. Tough, <laughs> tough road game. Tough road game. He'll have trouble. He'll have trouble figuring out who to cheer for in that game. Yeah, I, I don't know. He wore Georgia stuff in Athens. Is he in it? Wear Ole Miss. Hunter. Hunter's listening. Hunter, are you going to wear Ole Miss? I don't know. I feel like Georgia's just Georgia fan now. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he I'm, is. I'm, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to use the man's I'm going to use the man's words. You know, to 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 hold him to it. His he he cuts checks to the University of Georgia for season tickets. <laughs> <laughs> so I expect him to be in red and black. If he is not, I he's going to have some. I'm, we're going to have some words. <laughs> uh, I have no doubt he will be. Now, uh, if it was baseball, it might be right. a different story. Yeah, that's, that's just true. This is true because they have the elite piping on their uh, uniforms. Um, let's see, Walt Dog NC. <laughs> I, I liked his opening. If you can see Bobby over the seafood tower, 
Three questions for the Sandy Dog. <laughs> uh, first one, favorite cigar. What's your favorite cigar, Bobby? God, let's see. I would say that would be the um, Oliva uh, Melania Maduro. Uh, that is a really, really good smoke. Uh, I would say that's my favorite non-Cuban cigar out there. It's it, it's excellent. Nice. Bobby, I have to give you a shout out here on this regard because uh, I have seen you posting pictures of the Oliva brand. And I think I had mentioned to you that I found a deal on Oliva's and several folks that I know um, that do some oak cigars had agreed that Oliva was a great brand. And so I have really enjoyed the Oliva brand overall. I haven't had the one that you're specifically talking about, but now I'm going to have to go out and get it. Yeah, they, it, hey, I I rec they do go on sale. I uh, get a lot of my stuff at cigar.com, but there's a couple of other places out there and I don't buy them unless they're on sale. So that's once you find something that you like, you, mm. you wait until it goes on sale and then you actually get a decent <laughs> price on it. Jim Jim and I are, <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I know what Jim's gonna say. <laughs> Uh, on yeah, reserve, got a not hat, a sponsor. He's got a hat on. He's not a, a sponsor on yet. <laughs> <laughs> Onward Reserve has great products, and they go on sale at the end of the season, and, and, and it's fantastic. Uh, <laughs> hey, you don't you know where you don't need to wait for a sale, JP? Homefield Apparel. Head over to mygotapodcast.homefieldapparel.com and use code Hunker Down for fifteen percent off your first order. Hey, home, Homefield Apparel is excellent stuff. Yeah, a lot of yeah. the Vinci stuff. I like home home field apparel. Yes, big time. I'm a, I'm a fan. <laughs> yeah, they've got good stuff. They've got good stuff. They've been good. They've been good to us. So um, good. I, I got I got to come out and, and and speak at an event that they put on. It was pretty fun. So oh sweet. Um, let's see. Okay, he's got more. Uh, favorite favorite steak and from where? Wow. Oh, favorite steak. Uh, so I guess he's talking about the cut, right? Uh, so, believe it or not, uh, a, a New York, <laughs> I like New York strip, um, but you know, it's got, it's, and I like Wagyu. I mean, some, so I don't know how much we're going to get into steaks or anything like that. But <laughs> we're going to go as deep as you want, Bobby. <laughs> what, uh, all all right, I'm just going to take a minute want. here to talk about steaks. Heck you yeah. know, there's, you know, it, you get, we've got three types of Wagyu in the world. You've got, you know, you got Japanese, Australian, and American. And all of them are are graded out differently, but it's you know mostly uh, based on the the fat content, right, and the marbling and that and that type of thing. Uh, there's not as much wagyu meat out there as people might think. And then outside of wagyu, you have the, here's how it goes: it goes select, choice, prime, and then wagyu. And and Snake River Farms has black graded wagyu and gold rated black, uh wagyu and all of that is based on the, the marbling content the firmness and the color of the meat and uh i could i could i could talk about that for for quite a while uh so as far as as far as the and then it's specific cut of meat you know i would say that a ribeye cap uh a snake river farms wagyu um uh, ribeye cap has got to be one of the best pieces of meat that anybody could get. Period. I said, you know that dinner I was talking about before the uh, the LA game. Yeah, uh, that actually was the house special that night. They had brought in special uh, Snake River Farm uh, Wagyu ribeye caps. But but anyway, so so that's my wow. favorite cut right there. <laughs> Did they fly it in just for you? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I've, I've got a pretty good bit of pull, but I don't have that kind of pull. No, we just happened to get lucky that night. Uh, okay, so clarifying question from a novice steak person: um, Where does A five come into into this equation? Ooh, A five is Japanese. That's the highest graded Japanese Wagyu beef there is out there. That is extreme marbling with uh, the appropriate firmness and the correct size uh, of meat. For me, that's a little bit too fatty, to be honest with you. But yeah. So the Japanese grade, their they're Wagyu, A1 through 5. A5 is the top rated, most expensive. Okay, so I have had A5 Wagyu in Las Vegas at um, Gordon Ramsay's restaurant, and that was pretty awesome. 
Wow. It was basically like steak bacon. <laughs> well, that, <laughs> really, that's what it is. I mean, you cut it with a fork. It's it's almost yeah, that, that's no, too it, much marbling for me. It was almost it was basically sushi, if that makes sense. Like it was almost sushi because they, they cut it, they cut it in such a way where they they flash like they flash grilled it or something like that. Like, but we we ate it with chopsticks. It was you, you literally warm it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you put a quick sear like ahi tuna. You put a quick sear on both exactly. sides, and, and you're done. Yeah, it was really good though. Uh, I I enjoyed it, but it was definitely not something that I would get like a 16 ounce for. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I'm I'm with you. That's how I feel about it. Yes. Yeah. That one right, well, that you cooked. What was the one that you cooked earlier today that you had for the podcast fuel? Yeah, that was. <laughs> That, that was the really uh, Snake River Farms ribeye cap as well. That was black grade uh, wagyu. I've got some gold in the freezer, but that was uh, the black grade, and it was it was uh, superb. I will say, yeah, it was good. <laughs> it didn't it look- suck. <laughs> it didn't suck. <laughs> it looked uh, it, it looked fantastic. So th- there was a while we're on steak. There was another question about steak. We're, we're, maybe we can go to that, and we'll get back to the last one. Um, so Rob Roberts, I wanted to know how to pick out steaks. I think you just ed- educated us on what we're looking for, but he also wanted to know about, about steak seasoning. And then do you do a dry seasoning or a mar- or a marinade when you're cooking them? Ooh, those are, they, we got some great questions today, right? Off, off the Twitter, <laughs> we really did. Uh, I, I am not a, a steak marinade man. I, I never marinate my steaks. If you have to marinate a steak, then that's that I'm like a flank steak or a skirt steak. Those yeah. are the type of steaks that you marinate and then you grill them up for fajitas or things like that. That's not like if you're not just going to just have straight steak like that. Right. Totally. Um, right. I do. I do the dry brine. I put the Himalayan pink salt on it and put it in the fridge for at least three to six hours. And you can see the meat literally really turn bright pink and you see the juices start to flow in there. Uh, kind of, that's what it does. It kind of opens up the meat. Uh, so, so that's the only thing I do beforehand. Never marinate, marinate, and then you you set it out, and you always let it get to room temperature. And then once it reaches room temperature, then I do I do dust my steak up. Some some steak snobs will say that steak needs nothing but, you know, pepper, salt and pepper. Salt and pepper, yeah. I'm, I'm, I believe that you eat the steak the way you want it. And I don't, <laughs> I don't care what anybody else says. If you want to burn it, marinate it, you do it. That's your steak. I'm not going to hold that against you. Those people uh, are probably yelling at you for putting ice in your bourbon too. <laughs> right? Yeah. I, hey, I'll, I'll put my bourbon bar across the room over there against anybody's, but that's another, that's another story <laughs> for, for, for another day. That, this is not the bourbon episode. So yeah, then I, then I, uh, I, I do, I, I put two different types of light seasoning on mine. You know, uh, my friend boss dog has created his own seasoning and this is not, I'm not doing this intentionally plug him. But he has yeah. the right amount of garlic and rosemary. Those are two key spices for a great steak is garlic and rosemary. And then he has a bunch of other secret stuff in there. So I lightly season it with that. And then Weber Chicago steak seasoning. Uh, mm. Not Weber Montreal. Everybody uses that. But the Weber Chicago steak seasoning, you don't want to put it on too heavy. Just lightly sprinkle that. Uh, and at first I, I put a little bit of olive oil, uh, on the steak after it gets to room temperature, then I put those two seasonings on there. And then I, uh, I, I sear it for three minutes on both sides at 500 degrees. And then I, I cross sear it and then I turn it down on low for about another three minutes and then boom, it comes out a perfect, uh, medium rare. I love it. I like so it. How about that? Uh- I like it. I like it. What's the what's the difference between Montreal and Chicago seasoning? Uh, uh, Montreal has some other more quote stuff in it than the Chicago. Chicago doesn't have uh, quite as much seasoning in it, but it does have the right amount of garlic and rosemary. Yeah, those are those are two key flavor enhancing ingredients for a great steak. That nice. is. That is definitely what you see the the chefs on the on the TV doing. They'll, they'll throw a 
they'll throw the rosemary and the butter and the garlic and then they they baste it on the on the on the pan or whatever like it's always rosemary so yeah fresh it rosemary does it. it's good good stuff John, I'm going to be waiting for you to report back after trying out Bobby's stuff. John's John's got a new grill recently, so uh, <laughs> I, I know he's been all into the grilling of late. So. Oh, excellent. I did. I, I purchased a new a new Rectech uh, smoker, but it also gets up to that 500 degrees sear temperature. I've got I've got to get a uh, I've got to get a, a sear kit for it, Jim. Okay. Uh-huh. Not not many of the uh, pellet grills do that. I, I don't have a rec tech, but uh, I've heard great things about them. They're local to Georgia, not a sponsor yet, but uh, <laughs> I'm, wor- I'm working on that one, Jim. Nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. What did, okay. Uh, last one from Wild Dog NC. Favorite pour. What is your absolute favorite pour, Bobby? Uh, I've got, I've got, there's, there's a couple of them that are up there. Of course, I'm, I am partial to Buffalo Trace. I do like a weeded bourbon. Mm. Uh, Stag uh, is, I mean, it's very high. It's like a high proof, like 131 or whatever. So I take Stag, Weller 12, Weller mm. full proof. Uh, I would say those three are, are equal to me. Uh, as far as the pour, so if I if I could have like any any if I go to a place and the bourbon's free, you can have any pour you want. I'm going to get one of those three right there. Hmm. I think that's pretty in line with you, right, JP? I mean, the stag is a little bit too hot for me, but um, the Weller Twelve, like <clears throat> Weller Twelve, if I could if I could just get an an endless supply of it, I'd probably <laughs> drink that. I'd probably drink that as long as I could, but. Um, <laughs> Something a little bit more higher proof. Um, that full proof, you, you can't go wrong with that full proof, man. Yeah. 107, it, Weller 107, it, the red label, which it seems to be harder to find than even the full proof. <laughs> yeah, that I got an unopened bottle of uh, Antique 107 over there myself waiting for a special occasion of that. I, I do love that. Yeah. See, not, John, not I'm not quite as good as the full proof, but it, it is excellent. Bobby, I'm just glad that you've validated what I do and not always opening everything right away. Like John does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't do that. Uh, you have amazing. to look at it, admire it. I opened a bottle out, what am I going to open this up? And then who do you open it up with? Right. You don't open up a great bottle of bourbon by yourself. Uh, there we go. Here we go. It sounds like we need to go to Bobby's bar, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> John, what do you uh, have there? You, we never even heard what you have. Yeah, I just realized that I didn't. I have larceny. I have a. Uh, uh, it's yeah. it's a it's a fantastic, it's a fantastic bottle because um, I'm down to my last little bit of Weller um, special reserve, and if you're looking for a weeded bourbon that's easy to find, that's in that same like proof category, um, Larceny is a, is a fantastic weeded bourbon that you can buy that's pretty much readily available. Yeah, yeah, they, I, I can even get that here. So, and it's, heard, you know, and Bargetown it's even cheaper. Is not bad. I've heard that. Bargetown actually is a, is a great pour. And uh, speaking of Weller Special Reserve, my little honey hole in Albany, Georgia, <laughs> I got three bottles at $39.99 each. Nice. nice. Oh, just a while ago. How about that? <laughs> it, it's, see, it's relationship building. If you know people, they'll take care of you. That's right. That's right. I, I just went to, I, I had sent John pictures. I went to the barber shop that I go to has an annual bourbon tasting. And so they do like a catered dinner and then everyone brings a bottle and like they cap it at a certain amount of people and everyone comes a bottle. And so you can just take whatever you have, whatever, you, you know, you can try basically everything. Um, and there was like a St. Patrick's Kentucky L uh, that was very good. Ooh. So that was something new that I had had. That was pretty cool. Was it good? What, what, what it was, was good. Your, it was really good. good. Yeah. It, it was not, um, like it wasn't too hot. Um, I really, I thought it was pretty smooth. I liked it. I liked it. The, of the new ones that I tried, that was my favorite. Of course, it was like the St. Patrick's one. <laughs> but. Greg Fawcett loves uh, that, that white, that, uh, the one you were just talking about, I think. <sighs> Greg. Uh, I can talk Greg, to y'all. He does bourbon as well. He does. <laughs> he does. And uh he was he was just on Frip 
and had a meet up with my parents. They, they hung out the other day on Fripp. So shout you out know, to Greg. I, thought, I saw that. I thought, yeah, Greg is a great, great guy. He's, oh, yeah. he's another one, but never even met him until the uh, the Charlotte, uh, until we were in Charlotte, right? Whenever he hosted all that. Yeah. We, be- we become um, ex- excellent friends. Yeah, he's a... Just a, he's a good human being too. I kind of like people that are like that. <laughs> I, sure. like, I like good human beings. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, it's um, it's it's still kind of mind boggling to me, like that, like in this day and age, that people can still connect over the over the internet on a, on an app like Twitter. Like, I mean, Jim Jim can attest to this because our wives like you know joke, and my wife made fun of me for a while for. Like uh, you got all these people and uh, and she was like, you're going to go get kidnapped in, in, Clem- <laughs> in Clemson. Like I, I was going to meet in all these people that I'd never met before in my life. And like all of a sudden it's like now we're all interacting and talking and we're hosting people on the podcast, and, <laughs> uh, you know, planning meetups for the future. Like, I mean, you, you actually get to know people through the screen. Like and that, that that's mind boggling to me still. Like it's, at the scale, the scale at which like these people have been able to kind of generate that is kind of impressive. I agree. And you've been a big part of that, Bobby, because you're a big, you're, you have a big following on Twitter. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I don't really know how that happened, but I, but but I do. And I'm a little surprised too, because clearly I speak my mind on there, but I do have, (laughs) but I do have people that tell me in, in my mind, I am saying what I know so many people are thinking. But I'm just mm-hmm. going to go ahead and say it. <laughs> uh, you're 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 the uh, the verbal majority. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. Um, I right, see. Coach Trail Bill uh, checked in. Um, he, so he so he had one one for everyone. So this is for all. So JP, you take this one first. Favorite springtime night nightcap pour. What's your favorite springtime Ooh. nightcap pour? Springtime nightcap pour. Um, honestly, like I mean, lately I have been cycling through my my value bourbons. Um, that one, the the old granddad one fourteen, has mm. been a go to for me lately, and somewhat fortuitous that my local my local store just bought cases upon cases upon cases of this stuff. So it's readily available now. Like it used to be something that you'd find on the shelf and John be like, buy all six of them when you find them, <laughs> then they may not get it for eight months. Yeah. But he's got cases upon cases. <laughs> nice. Nice. Old granddad 114 is, is, is a solid pour that John tweets got me into. I'll follow that. I'll follow that trail and go with early times bottled and bond. I do, that's a that's a really good one um, that I don't always have, but I've got it right now. So I've been enjoying that one a lot lately. What about you, Bobby? Uh, let's see. I don't know. You you know, I got like I said, I got that Weller Special Reserve at such a good price. That's actually yeah. kind of been my go-to. And it, you know, Woodford is what I started off with. The first time I had Woodford, I was fortunate yeah. enough to be at the uh, we were at Wednesday at the Kentucky Derby and at the time FedEx uh, sponsored uh, a, a race there and the sponsor was Woodford Reserve and believe it or not that was like the first time I'd had Woodford uh, and at the time I was thinking that was like super top shelf not that it's not and I've actually right. toured the, the distillery or whatever so so Woodford would be a uh, go-to for me and all that kind of stuff and Another little tidbit as I digress, uh, they looked around after the race to go down on the track and present the the flowers and all that. And I happened to be the only FedEx officer available. So I got to go down on the track and present the winning jockey and family the uh, the, the flower wreath. And this was like when they run the races on Wednesday or whatever. But I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, Please. Please tell me that there's a picture of Bobby Wilson standing next to a horse with a giant wreath of roses. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is. There's uh You've got that's one thing, I, that's one thing I kid about. I could I tell people the truth. They're like, there's no way this dude ever really did all that stuff. I, 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 I've lived a very blessed life. I, I have. Uh, I don't have to make a lot of stuff up, thankfully. Uh I love it. Um, all right, he wanted to also know uh 
golfing foursome uh, with former or current UGA coaches and players, who, who are the three people you're going to go play with? Is this, this for is me? Like, this is like a UGA more question. You can go first, Bobby. This was he, he wanted to know what it was for all of us, but we'll we'll let you. Take oh it wow! Me, unless you want time to think about it. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna take time to think about that. I'm gonna I want to pass this with the YouTube. I'll go. Uh, you gotta have. I, I gotta have Kirby. Um, yeah. So, um, man. So Kirby. Uh, I kind of want to say Heinz Ward. Uh, that was a big Heinz Ward guy. Um, <laughs> I just got a good one. It was okay. co- so this doesn't have to be a coach. It could, it be-, could be coach or player, current oh. or former. All right, and now I feel like I backed myself in the corner, but I'm going to go with Mike Bobo for Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, that was out of friggin' left field. <laughs> what the heck? If you if you know the if you if you've seen the rivalry on Twitter, you'll know. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Uh, that was great. Oh yeah, I've I've seen that. Yes. <laughs> so, so mine mine would probably be Kirby, Vince Dooley, and I am gonna I'm gonna take some creative liberties, and I'm gonna go Larry Munson. Hmm. And like you're you're out. You're out of room, John, because you have to play yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. you're, you're, done, you're done. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, you nailed that one. So I'm going to go with Kirby. I'm yeah. going to go with Matt Stafford because I'm thinking that dude could hit a ball like forever, right? Mm, and I like that. Um, you know what? I'm going to go with Heinz Ward as well. I've always been a major fan of his and. I lived in, in Pittsburgh when he was playing up there a little bit. So, oh, nice. So I'm, I really like uh, like Heinz Ward. So that would that would be my three: Kirby, Heinz Ward, and Matt Stafford. Mm, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. I like um, it. That was a good question, right? It was good. That was hey, a co- great co- question. Co- <laughs> coach coming in with the good ones. Um, all right, and then Coach had one more for you, Bobby. Um, he said, "Since you and Dan Mullen both live at Reynolds, any good Dan Mullen stories?" <laughs> <laughs> wow i guess i gotta be a little bit i don't know if i want to be honest with this or not uh say what you're comfortable saying Mullen's actually very recently left reynolds but i won't i won't i won't get into that uh but yeah like every member guest that i the, the last member guest that i played in every time i looked up mullins were like sitting 10 feet away from me and wow. he is and and you know we always talk about how goofy he is and all that Mm. He is a goofy band. There is no <laughs> doubt about that. He's he really is. So, so that that would be my stories right right there. Is that every, every time I looked up, I saw him. He was like next, is sitting at a table or whatever, and he didn't have a lot of friends. So, uh, <laughs> so I don't know. So, hey, yeah, I, he, I don't. I don't mean to be so negative about Mullins, but yeah, that was that was my take on him. Let well, I me. Mean, he's living in the You're wrong city. About going into the lions den. Yeah. I, 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 that that makes no sense to me. Just it does over, seem like just, an odd place to live. Retire, for him just to go live. retire in Jacksonville or something. I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah. That was weird. That was weird. I love it. That's great. Um, all right, <laughs> all right. I think you saw this one, Bobby. Pup Dog wanted to know uh, what did your grocery receipt look like this week. <laughs> I think the the most I've ever triggered people on Twitter, and I and you know me, I can I can I can uh, <laughs> trigger some Bama people pretty quickly. I do I do take a lot of pride in that, but uh, just simple posting of a public receipt <laughs> and how much groceries have gone up have been some of the most controversial uh, threads I've ever seen in my life, and I don't to the, to a lot of me understand that. So that's, oh, yeah, so that's Bob just, just cranking it up a little bit is what <laughs> <Yes>. she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too good. I remember, I literally remember the first time that happened. Uh, I, I think it like entered into a text thread that John and I were in. I was like, oh my gosh, people are all over Bobby for his public receipt. <laughs> no, right? I couldn't, uh, I couldn't believe it. it was, you would have thought I posted the most controversial thing on the planet. Like, um, dude, it's my freaking groceries at Publix. 
Publix, <laughs> Publix is definitely gotten out of hand. <laughs> oh, too yeah. Good. Too I good. Uh, I didn't make that political. Everybody else did. Right, right. Um, all right, John Michael D. Uh, wanted to know viewing priority, Augusta or the spring game? Um, and then he said, and then TV or attending? And I, I won't be attending Augusta, uh, but... I won't be attending. I do have a shot at a Sunday ticket. Uh, nice. I'm, so I got to I got to wait. And hope hopefully that will come through, but I'm not certain. I do, being, I do plan on being I do plan on being at G Day. Okay. Uh, and I can uh, you know I can see what's going on you know on my phone and those type of things. Uh, so yeah, G Day takes precedent for me. Generally, usually we're down. We we go to uh, Water Sound. That at 30A every uh, every April, and usually it's it's the it's during G Day, so I've missed the last two or three. So this year it's a week earlier, so I get an opportunity to uh, to go to G Day before I go down to the beach. So I'm excited about that. Nice, nice. That is cool. I always have a G Day conflict, so I- I've got one again this year. <laughs> I've heard good, I've heard good things about Water Sound too. Yeah, um, we love it down there. Let's see. Uh, oh, who takes the? He wants to know from each of us who takes the jacket this year. So, who's you got a, anyone have a master's pick? Let's go, Harmon. Well, <laughs> Harmon, man, he. Har- I thought Harmon was going to win uh, yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah. And then all was... of a sudden, Scotty Shepard just goes bonkers with a sixty-four on Sunday. Who does that? Yeah, and it was crazy. The the narrow putt misses for both. I mean, I thought Harmon missed a close one. And then when Clark's like went to the bottom of the dang cup and jumped back out was wild, but yeah, I, I like, Har- yeah. I like Harmon. Yeah. I like him a lot. He's, he's a, he, he, and you heard kids, you know, kids was doing the commentary. Yeah. And kids said whenever uh, Harmon showed up as a freshman, he became the number one player like overnight. He said he was playing as good as a as a freshman at Georgia as he does now in the pros. Mm. So so yeah, he's always been good. He, he's a little dude, but he's yeah. got better distance than people believe. Yeah, he he's good. Yeah. But but for the Masters, you know, it's hard to 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 say that Scotty Scheffler is not going to win. And somebody, you know, now that we got Liv involved and all that, you know, Rob, yeah. I, I would say a dark horse is going to be John Rob. That guy's game is still unbelievable. So I would say between Scheffler and John Rahm are my two picks. Okay. I'll, I'll throw in Clark. He's playing good. Uh, had a good round at the at the players. Um, wouldn't mind to see Harris English uh, do well throw another Bulldog in there. So those are, yeah. those are my guys. <laughs> Stupid question. Is, is Tiger playing? I don't think so. Uh, you know, I don't think so either. Uh, yeah. But he might be. I haven't. You, if if he can, he probably will. But I, I don't know. Great question. Yeah. We'll have to Google it. We'll have to hit the Googles. Um, That's like one of those things. Uh, if you if you're a past champion, you you get an invitation, right? So like, yeah. I Until figure, you're 65. Uh, unless unless I'm dead, I'm probably going to try to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If he's healthy enough to swing a golf club, he will exactly. be playing. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, John Michael D just added a, a PS. Uh, whenever the Harbaugh's ask who has it better than us, I always think they need to meet Bobby. All right. Uh, let's see. Jason and Noonan uh, wants to know what is your favorite golf course you've played and what's your preferred beer while playing? You had a favorite uh, course? Yeah, let's see. I was, you know, Whistling Straits uh, was was really nice. I got a chance to play that at a at a FedEx event. I played Torrey Pines and I played, uh, you know, Pebble Beach, Spyglass. Hmm. Uh, but believe it or not, there's a, a public course in Newport Beach, uh, Pelican Hill. Their ocean course. They have an ocean course and an. An Two, two courses there. And I thought that Pelican Hill was, uh, I really liked it. Mm. So, so clearly Pebble Beach is probably the best out of all of them, but second would be Pebble Beach. I thought Torrey Pines was, uh, was very overrated. Actually with a, um, with on that note, uh, coach Hayes, uh, coach Hayes huddle 
wanted to know like a little bit of twist on that, like the coolest golf course you've ever played. And then he said, what's your best shot to any like marquee hole, marquee hole on said course? Like, did you ever play like have like a great shot on like a marquee hole? Oh, well, you know, my buddy is a member of Somerset in Reno, Nevada. Uh, the elevations there are unbelievable. Like it, we're, we're down there getting sunburned and there's still uh, snow on the mountaintops and the elevations are unbelievable Air's clear, the ball flies forever. So that's one of my one of my favorite courses ever. And it's very, very difficult. Hmm. And two years ago, we were playing a practice round the day before we were playing his member guest. And I hmm. have a hole in one on one of the par threes there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. So <laughs> yeah, I, w- I would say that. Okay. Uh, that's that's fair. Um Let's see. Preferred beer while playing. I think I, I mean it's it's not beer, Bobby. It's White Claw, right? I it mean, is White I'm Claw. Just saying. If, if if I'm going to drink a beer, it's going to be a Miller Lite. Miller Lite. I mean, okay. I've always drank Miller Lite, but yeah, I'm a I'm a seltzer guy. I mean, beer kind of fills you up. If you're, and yeah. I know people make fun of the seltzers or whatever, but man, <laughs> on the golf course, you cannot beat. Uh, you know, 10 or 12 seltzers. I'll just throw that out there. Right. Right. <laughs> let, me tell you, let me tell you, those seltzers with a little, with a little vodka floater, with a little hunker down floater. Mm. Um, those, those are nice at the pool. Mm. Ooh, they are. Nice. When I, when I play golf, I have, uh, I've got some uh, Weller special reserve in my flask. And we call that birdie juice. Whenever somebody <laughs> in your board <laughs> makes a birdie, I've got these little miniature red solo cups. So I pour after someone makes a birdie, you pour a shot, everybody in your foursome has one. Nice. Birdie juice. That's awesome. I love that. Mm, man, I may have to take that, Bobby. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like that. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, Graham Coffee chiming in. Uh, all right. So, so he says, Bobby has to order one dish from one restaurant for the rest of his life. The establishment can be anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world. Order Ooh. can include two sides, a main, an appetizer and a cocktail or wine pairing. What are you eating from now until eternity? <laughs> wow. So is it, a, is it a meal or just one item we're talking about? here? Yeah. So it's the meal. It's the meal. It's the meal. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of jiggle this up a little bit because I think rules are merely guidelines, <laughs> right? So I'm gonna kind of add it. the world it's is like your stop, oyster, Bobby. It's like a stop sign is merely a recommendation. In, in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna have the fried lobster from Hal's in Atlanta for an appetizer. Okay. Uh, then I'm gonna have uh, probably. A porterhouse at Capitol Grill in uh, Southern California, there in in Newport Beach. I, okay. I love that. That is good. And the I'm going to have the seafood tower from the winery in Newport Beach. That's where I took uh, all of our people for all my friends for uh, that dinner we had before that. So. So I'm kind of mixing up the restaurants, but I'm taking the best from those. And I'm trying to think about my favorite dessert. Mm. I know I'm a big guy. Believe it or not, I don't eat a lot of desserts. I'm mm. going to go over that. The one at Garibaldi's with the praline basket and the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Oh. oh, she's telling me about the, the, oh, the carrot cake with the praline basket? It wasn't a carrot cake. It was just the praline basket with ice cream. Oh. That does, I mean, that does I sound amazing. Does I'm going to take Anna's word for it. <laughs> I'm going to take Anna's word yeah, for it. Throw that in for, but yeah, my favorite uh, dessert is carrot cake. So I guess that's okay. my combination right there. I like it. Carrot, carrot cake is a good, and that's a good choice. I like it. Um, all right, let's, we get, we can, uh, we got a couple of football. We had to bring one back to football from Bubba. Ask Bobby uh, what game he thinks is most important next year and why. And Bubba, Bubba says that you always have great insight, Bobby. So I feel uh, like I know the thanks, answer to this question. Bubba's my buddy over at St. Simon's Island, man. I gotta see, I got an open invitation to play a little golf over there. There we great go. Great guy. Uh yeah, I saw him uh first time I met him was at the uh Natty in in Indianapolis. Mm. So, so let's see. Um uh, clearly the, you know, September in Tuscaloosa is a 
you know, yeah. I would say is, is very important, probably more important than, you know, I talked about the game at Austin. I talked about the game at Ole Miss. Ole Miss game may wind up being more important, but although we're all going to, we're going to make the playoffs no matter what. So I think when we ease over to Tuscaloosa in September and whip their ass handily, <laughs> Uh, that's going to, that's going to say, guess what, boys? We, we didn't know. We not only reloaded, we double reloaded this year. Mm. Man. Yeah, pardon me, I've, I've had a couple of bourbons during our conversation. <laughs> that's pardon okay. profanity there. If, 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 sorry, Carter. If, uh, <laughs> I tell you what, man, the, the Marler tweets are going to be off the chain. We've got to, we've, we've got, we've got to close the deal on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Yeah, I can't wait to see him cry again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man! Um, let's see. Okay, so uh, back to some other food food questions. I, I had I had missed one. Uh, so from our buddy Chuck, USC engineer. Uh, so Bobby, he said, when I reverse sear a ribeye that has good marbling, I will do it at a slightly lower temp to render more fat, but also keep it on the rare side of medium rare. Have you tried this method before? And do you think it has any merits? Okay, good, uh, Chuck, good question. Uh, I would say no, it, it does make logical sense. Of course, you're an engineer, so that's why you're thinking. Like that. <laughs> uh, but, you're but, that's engineering. Act, but, <laughs> but that's actually uh, a falsehood. That's not good. You want to sear that baby for three minutes on 500 degrees because you also want you want that crust. Uh, even though it makes sense to like slow sear or whatever to render the fat, all that sounds pretty good. Mm. Uh, but you don't get that crust on it like you do when you throw that 500 degree sear on it. So uh, it's logical thinking, but in the world of steaks, no, that's not what you want to do. Got it. Got yeah, it. I think the reverse sear is interesting because I haven't I haven't messed around because I know I have I have some buddies that do the sous vide steak yeah, situation and then and then they'll throw it on that that like eight hundred degree grill or something like that and like just for like a few seconds just to get the the sear on it the crust. And they, and they swear by it they, the crust yeah they, they swear by it but um, I've I've I, I don't know I I don't subscribe to that. I don't subscribe to that method. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't either. I'm with, you, Bobby. That, I'm with you. I got friends that swear by that as well. That sous vide or whatever you call that stuff. I like cook yeah. it in a bag and warm right. water and all that. Yeah. Dude, that's that. Nah, get away from all that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Ch- check out a bonus question, but I know Bobby, you said you're, you're actually, we did just learn that you're not huge on dessert, but he said uh, bonus question, bourbon and dessert. Yes or no. And I know John, you said, you had an answer that everyone needs to know about this. Yeah. I mean, go for it, John. I mean, we've got, we've got Buffalo Trace and Nutter Butters, right? Oh, <laughs> yes. Yes. When, when I saw, when I saw <laughs> Chuck tweet that, I'm like, yeah, I know, I know what the answer is going to be. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Fantastic. Well played, JP. Lovely. I know a lot of people don't realize that bourbon with dessert actually goes together pretty good. It does, especially if you get, if you stick it to like the peanut butter, caramel, chocolate, like the, those. In, in my opinion, like those. Keep those it in that flavors. room right there. You are all good, John. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and especially you know if you've just beaten Alabama for the national championship, and you're back at your hotel in Indianapolis, there's nothing <laughs> like Buffalo Trace and Nutter Butters. <laughs> Hey, do you guys? Hey, do you guys hey, remember that I time saw you we won two the guys at the bar after that game? Sorry, oh my Jeff, gosh! Remember, I saw you and your dad. Absolutely hilarious! Yeah, we're like, <laughs> it's Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, I actually okay. So this is funny. I ran in in that bar. I ran into a buddy of mine who used to live down the street from me when I lived in Georgia in Alpharetta, um, and he had a buddy who was with him. <laughs> so so my buddy Matt had introduced me to his friend and then his friend says to me he was like hey that guy that you were just talking to was that Bobby Wilson from Twitter <laughs> <laughs> I was like yes yes it is he's like oh man I follow him <laughs> so See, I told you Bobby <laughs> oh man oh it's crazy uh, 
Okay, sorry, I had I had to go find the find, find Chuck's question. I, I would say too, um, there actually we have a um, like a custard place right by our house, and they'll do like a salted caramel bourbon custard Ooh. sometimes, yeah. and that is fantastic. So even like bourbon flavors in traditional desserts, I, I, I found to be excellent. I tell you what, I like to what I like to eat um, as a as a nightcap along with my bourbon uh, with a dessert. And if Anner likes the the pralines, Bobby, the pub, pub, or Kroger has a private selection um, pralines uh, on the nut aisle that uh, that that pairs very nicely with the uh, with the bourbons. Ooh, yeah. I'll have to give that a try. Yeah, for her. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Uh, I don't know what what else, what else what else you guys got. Actually, there's a couple. Other, there's, Rick Patton wanted to know thoughts on NIL, but I feel like we could have a whole other podcast if we, if we do. Uh, yeah, it's, it's too late. We're already we've been at it for about an hour and a half now, so I'm not sure we need to go down the NIL rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. I don't think Great so question, but not enough time. <laughs> um, um, what haven't we, we asked Bobby that we that you want people to know about you? There we go. That's a good one, John. Oh, wow, John. That's kind of deep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, so I, the reason I asked that question is that I mentioned you're you're like on the Mount Rushmore of UGA Twitter, right? So, and I feel like that people are following you that you may not know. So, like, what, what aside from the what you put out there, like, what what do, what do people not know about you? Hey, I'm, I'm an open book, so they probably know everything. But you know, I I, I You're grew a big up Biden in, I, supporter. We know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. Uh, I, you know, you know the fact that I grew up in a very very small town in Southwest Georgia. Uh, you know, there were eighty. There were only eighty nine of us that that uh, graduated in my high school graduating class uh, in Leesburg, Georgia. And to join a company like FedEx, and I've I've, I've lived uh, many places in North America. I had an office in Toronto, Canada, for five years, and I've traveled every province out there. I've seen a hockey game in every arena in in Canada. A lot of people may not know that. I'm like I feel like I'm 49 percent Canadian now. <laughs> uh, so so I would I would and I love hockey. Uh, so I would say that. I would I would say that you know working you know I've, I've been very blessed if if you work hard and treat people right that you know great things can happen for you and to you and for your family so I would like to think that I'm example of, of what could happen whenever you know you you do those type of things you work hard have integrity those type of things not to be sappy but you ask who's, who's your hockey team who's your hockey team Bobby. I didn't know. Um, I didn't know you were a hockey fan. So who's your? Yeah, hockey fan? Uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah. I've mm. actually, I've actually been to uh, Cole Harbor to Sidney Crosby's house that he grew up in, uh, in Cole Harbor, Nova Scotia. So big time uh, Sidney Crosby fan. I, I, I w- we uh, FedEx sponsored uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins, so I got a chance to go to a lot of the special uh events and those type of things so so yeah i'm i'm a big time hockey fan i i feel like the i feel like the penguins are kind of like if if you grew up in the in the 90s uh if you grew up in the 90s like you you have a a natural affinity to the penguins because of mario lemieux and uh yammer yager that that's me. Like they're like uh, the Chicago Bulls for me <laughs> of hockey. <laughs> well, they right. they were, and you know, you know, Mario, you know, bought, uh, Lemieux bought the team. They actually owed him twenty two million dollars. They almost lost the franchise, and then he brought Sidney Crosby out there, completely turned it around, and now they're one of the most profitable franchises in a brand new arena and all that. So. So yeah, so so Mario's a, a great individual on top of being a great hockey player for what he did for that franchise. Mm. Shout out, shout out to Lamar, our Pittsburgh friend. I know. I was just, I was thinking that. I was like, I wonder. I was like, have we talked hockey with Lamar? We need to find out. We haven't he's really. Like, oh, I'm uh, sure Lamar knows knows all that for sure. I would think. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, a lot of people might not think that. You know, grow up in South Georgia, and I'm I'm such a big time hockey fan. I mean, Atlanta's had two hockey teams. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> hey, hey, third third it, time might what, be the charm coming up. <laughs> one of them are the Calgary Flames, who I've seen in Calgary play. The other yep. one are the Winnipeg Jets, right? So, yep. yep. We know how to lose a team there in Atlanta. <sighs> yeah, I like the Thrashers. I like I like I, I would go to. I had Thrashers fever that playoff team. <laughs> yeah, I think. Once you go, if you go to a, if you ever go to a live uh, playoff hockey game, you mm. see like, wow, what fantastic athletes they are. Yeah, hockey much better sport in person than on TV. To me, that, that's one of the biggest differences from TV totally to in person. Games, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, no, we learned something. I, I didn't know that, Bobby. That's cool. I didn't that's know cool. that either. Yeah, well, John asked. That's why we asked. That's, <laughs> why I asked. that's why I asked the deep questions. <laughs> the probing questions. That's right. That's right. Oh, I'm man. hitting analysis on my I got a podcast. Hey, yeah, you're, you're not going to get this this kind of stuff anywhere else. Uh, well, Bobby, I know we, we're, we're keeping you late. This has been an absolute blast. Uh, just so you know, John and I, we have, we have, I know like this is probably the first you're hearing of this, but we have, we have talked about wanting to have you on. And, uh, so we were super excited when you agreed when we reached out, um, <laughs> you've become, you've become a good friend of ours, um, uh, through friends and, and, and family. I know we've talked about your relationship with my, with my dad as well. So we've, we've definitely appreciated your friendship. Um, and, uh, seeing you at the tailgates, seeing you at the games, uh, we've had some great memories, uh, and this is, just adds another one to that list. So thanks for coming on. Yes. Uh, thank thank you. you so much, Jim. I, pr- I really appreciate that. And John, you too, man. It was, it's a hundred percent my pleasure. I guarantee you, man, it, it has been a bit of a, bit of blast. Fantastic. Well, hey, we will, uh, everyone go follow Bobby on Twitter. If you're not already, I'm sure they all are. But uh, go, go follow Bobby on Twitter uh, to, to, to get the takes. And um, I know I won't I won't be a G day, uh, but I will definitely see you in the fall uh, you know, at the latest. All right, Jim. Go dogs. Hey, go dogs. Go dogs. Cheers, Bobby. <laughs>